stories. We have been told bedtime stories that we never come to forget. Those dark, cruel ones that have frightened us stay with us forever. Then we grow up to read our own stories before going to bed, realizing later on that it's time to create our own, create our life of stories. Now, leaving hope and positivity behind, happy endings are indeed beautiful. But I want to tell you, what is left behind from broken hearts, shattered souls and permanent scars is nothing but marks of beauty as well. This is my story, a story of a permanent scar. A, sto a story that I despised, came to fall in love with. Aren't those the stories that leave an impact, the ones we cherish? Are people with scars aware of this? Do they feel beautiful? Because beauty is a feeling, a feeling that reflects who you are. Now, unfortunately, the majority of them don't. The majority is hurt, insecure, and depressed, looking for ways to hide their scars, to escape reality. You're dealing with souls crazy enough to believe they can change the past. The damage that bullying could cause for children with scars is huge. But let us not forget, what they are capable of causing for themselves on a personal level is massive too. Scars have many negative psychological effects on children, especially when they are victims of bullying and emotional abuse. How can someone heal? Did I heal? When I was one year and a half, I was like probably this big, I, I was in an elevator with both my parents. They're here right now. And this is very traumatizing for them, the accident. And it's an old elevator. It probably shook or something. And my arm got stuck in the gap. I fell on the ground in between the floor and the door. It was going to the second floor. There's no stop button. There's nothing. And now my elbow was crushed and my arm was literally hanging. My, my dad was smart enough not to pull it off because knowing that it's really stuck and it might, I might lose my arm. Now, they took me to the hospital and there was the probability that I would lose my arm. And I also passed out. They thought I was dead, but here I am. So, at the hospital, they thought that I would no longer have my arm. And this was very traumatizing. My mother was pregnant with uh, my brother. But as I grew up, I grew up with a scar and a twisted elbow that I thought was perfectly normal. Until people started pointing it out, until I felt different, till I felt inferior, till I no longer accepted myself. And I, I would walk with the thought that people would not notice me, Jubran, but would rather notice my scar. It was very emotionally draining. It's, it's honestly an incident that left my heart lost between an unfair world of hate, hurt, and anger, and a blessed world of love, gratefulness, and thankfulness. Why me? Now, this is a question I've always asked. Why me? And thank God you still have your arm. That was their answer. Well, one, I'm an atheist, and hence God is irrelevant. And two, I do believe I would be better off without a twisted elbow, don't you think? Now, this is, I'm sorry for that. It's fine. <laughs> I, thank you. I remember I approached my mom once uh, and I said, mom, I need some money. Uh, my father was there too. She asked me what for. I said I want to buy this rubber band thing to put around my arm when I go to the gym. Now my father directly interferes. Yes, sure son, give him whatever he wants, yalla. Now it's ultimately impossible to say no to my father. Like look at him, he's a communist soldier. He has this deep, scary, loud voice. And he says something, it's even worse than all the Arabic teachers you've ever had. <laughs> What's more terrifying is that one of my ex-girlfriends thought it was sexy. Now, <laughs> says a lot. Anyway, I, I bought it that day, but I never wore it. They knew I felt insecure at the gym, and I wanted to hide my elbow. 
but they didn't come against my will and allowed me to do whatever I thought would make me feel comfortable around people. Now, I don't know if he's, my father is aware of the positive impact he's leaving on me or not. He's much of, not much of an emotional supporter, but I would, I would remember that when he would introduce me to someone, he would tell them about the accident and then directly, passionately tell them about my academic success and the potential he sees in me. A mother that warns me not to use the elevator every time I go visit my grandma's place. And friends that help me, supportive friends, and teachers at school that would gather around and speak about how sexy a scar is on someone's arm. Just like, I would smile, not because I believed what they said, but because I have people like them in my life trying to put some effort, trying to make me feel good. But on the other hand, I had people throughout school years trying to put me down trying to make fun of me, knowing it can hurt me. Now, the, the sad thing is that it's usually the closest ones to you. And at work or when I'm out, I would always hear that your doctor is an idiot. And I would hear that you, you can go for operation again and fix your elbow. So people convinced me that I have to fix the elbow that's functioning 100%. And they said I have to reach 18, so I have a developed bone structure and I can go for surgery. So a few days after my 18th birthday, I went, and I'm lucky to meet one of the best doctors in the country that looked at me and said, I'm not gonna do this surgery. Go do it somewhere else, I would not do it. Now this is one of the ethical doctors we have in Lebanon that told me that I would not fix an elbow that's already working and lose it in the process of making it look better. So I came to understand that the problem was not my elbow. The problem was the way I look at it. Alchemy of change. Am I there yet? That's a no. Did I completely heal? That's a no. But you know what's a big fat yes? Is that I took the first step, the most important one. Is that I learned how to love myself, because no one is gonna do it for you. Don't ask me how, because I don't know. But the moment you try, the moment you look yourself in the mirror and change the way you think, and look at my elbow and say, it's beautiful and I'm beautiful, this is when your whole life changes. This is when you start witnessing change. My scars don't define me. This is an image of an arm tattoo I saw online that got me thinking of what actually defines a person. What could define you more than a story carved on your skin? A story that destroyed your character. One that allowed you to grow and change. I love that font, it's beautiful art, my friend. But may my imperfections define me, I tell you. And may my scars reveal the stories you need to know about me. I would like to ask just each and every one of you to recall the most intimate and beautiful hug you have ever had. Now, you might not remember the day, you might, not, you might just remember the person, the feeling. Now, how did that make you feel? If you don't feel like that towards your own self each and every moment, like a beautiful, intimate hug, there is something wrong. Please fix it. Please allow me to help you fix it. Thank you.